That whole AU building was built by the Chinese, designed by the Chinese. Really, the symbol of all of us, the African Union building. And of course, the Chinese put their bugs in there and their spies in there. That, that's a problem. We, at, at a minimum, we can take Chinese money and do something else, not to build our own house, our own symbol. So the starting point is to say the very building itself must have been designed by Africans, funded by Africans. And hence, there will be no problem of these Chinese putting their gadgets in there to spy on us. Actually, I like that point. It shows you, black man, black woman, you are on your own. Not even the Chinese are in your <coughs> corner. Their competitors, their business people, I know they're sometimes better than the Europeans in the sense that they support infrastructure, they fund projects here and there, but they're still supporting Chinese national interests. They are not Chairman Mao giving us guns to fight for freedom. These are business people. And, and so that point tells you that we are on our own. Even our best friends are spying on us. Because when you look at Europe, you look at America, the Chinese are really our best friends in terms of development. But they're spying on us. Which means, again, as I said earlier on, this agenda, we're going to achieve it in spite of everybody else. They will work with us not out of love. Remember I said not out of love, not out of comradeship, out of economics. They see value. They see 1.3 billion people. They see a market for their products. They see $2.3 trillion GDP. They see business, not love, not comradeship. So they're doing that because they want to maximize benefit to China. So. Totally agree with you. We need an ecosystem approach. You can't just have engineers being progressive when governments are not progressive. You can't have decolonized engineers when the president and cabinet are not decolonized. So decolonization has to be all embracing. The African leaders must be progressive. So we need what I call an ecosystem approach to decolonization, ecosystem approach to <laughs> Agenda 2063, the African agenda. They want you to buy Sony, to buy Samsung, to buy iPhones. So you have to force them by working together. So they are enemies of African program, pro progress. You talked about Kruma, and, but I'm talking about today, the technology struggle, we are on our own. That's why we need to work together because it's not in the interests of China or the interests of Japan for us to produce cars, to produce catalytic converters, to produce computers, to produce aeroplanes, Boeing, Airbus. Why would they support you to build your own planes? You're going to eat into their markets. But can you imagine if we have one, by the way, the reason why I'm emphasizing rich integration, we can't all be producing cars and aeroplanes. We can say South Africa produced a plane, Ghana produced a car, Zimbabwe a cell phone. So right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> then what you do then is, we are going to buy our cell phones from Zimbabwe, all of us as Africans. We are going to buy our planes, all of us from South Africa. We are going to buy our cars, all from Ghana. Again, the market is there already. And you guys, I've got two phones. At least one will be an Ubuntu phone. You can have your iPhone. The second one becomes a Mpumalanga or Lutito phone. <laughs> And let's just get democracy and governance and the end there. We must go beyond that and talk about technology, talk about the fourth industrial revolution, talk about integration, talk about the economy. Remember the Chinese, I say the Chinese are not, demo, are not a democracy, according to Western definitions, and even our own def definitions, but they are the second biggest economy. And they've managed to take 400 million people out of poverty under 30 years. So what we're saying is, that's why I use the word perverted way. In their perverted way, they've been very successful. One, by employing engineers, by allowing their best minds around the country, by moving 400 million people out of poverty. And now they're poised to overtake America as the biggest economy. So democracy is a means to an end, not an end in itself. Democracy must be a tool, a framework to bring economic prosperity. There are many democratic countries who are not doing very well economically. <laughs> Singapore is not so great as a democracy, but it's number three in the world in terms of performance without proper democracy. Malaysia, 
Mm -hmm. So I'm emphasizing the point that yes to democracy, yes to human rights, yes to good governance as a foundation for technology, as a foundation for prosperity. Confidence is very important. Business confidence, consumer confidence, investor confidence, national confidence, and all those are rooted in good governance. So I greatly appreciate that contribution emphasizing the issue of freeness and fairness of our election, uh, the credibility of our governance. Integration, very important. That's why we are emphasizing interdisciplinary approach, multidisciplinary approach. You can't just say, I'm a civil engineer and narrow civil. I'm a mechanical engineer, narrow mechanical. I'm an electrical engineer, narrow electrical. The fourth industrial revolution wants you to think along several dimensions. Mechatronics, for example. The synergistic integration of mechanical, electrical, and computer science to produce optimum products. So in the mechatronic world, you won't survive as a mechanical engineer. You won't survive as an electrical engineer. You won't survive as, an, as a computer scientist. You need to think along three areas. So the integration of data, big data, and mechanical engineering. In, uh, intelligent algorithms and mechanical engineering, a multidisciplinary approach, interdisciplinary approach, is what we need. Yes, we have our departments, but we must teach in a, an approach which is not silo, but multidisciplinary in approach. Integration is the language of uh, the fourth industrial revolution. Why is integration not working? Sovereignty is the big issue. People emphasize national sovereignty. My country, my Nigeria, my Malawi, my little Zimbabwe. We must think about the continent. You know, just to challenge you, you know, you must say, I'm an African first. A citizen of Sadat second, the South African third. I'm an African first. A citizen of Ecuador, second. A Ghanaian, third. But you can't because you're so stuck to your national flag, national anthem, national basketball team, national soccer team, national, national, national. We are nationally wired as citizens and as leaders. So it's, it's a constraint. You, you can't fully embrace integration unless you say the nation state is so yesterday. Regional integration is the way to go. The nation state is so yesterday. Condendo integration is the way to go. And I told you the president, Muswati in Swaziland, who wants to be king, he's just, he's just renamed the country to Iswati. He's not ready to give up on national sovereignty. Ramaphosa has just gone into power. He, he wants to enjoy his presidency before he becomes the minister of tourism for Africa. <laughs> so the major, they will talk it. They will talk. Then they will talk. Then they will talk. Then they will talk. Then they go back to the nation state. How many times have you heard them in parliament say, our SADAC budget, our contribution to the AU, the 20, agenda 2063, they, they don't believe in regional integration. Krumah, what did Krumah say? Let's go back to Krumah. And I'll quote Krumah. We as Ghanaians are prepared to surrender our sovereignty in part or in total in pursuit of African unity. Close quote. In 1960, when they wrote their constitution, we are prepared to surrender our sovereignty in part or in total in pursuit of African unity. How many Africans can speak like that right now? We as South Africans are prepared to surrender our prosperity in part or in total in pursuit of African prosperity. Are you ready? <laughs> or oh, we are chasing the other Africans out of South Africa. <laughs> the, 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 the visionaries of the 60s were thinking Africa. What else did Krumah say? The independence of Ghana is meaningless unless it is linked to the independence of the rest of the African continent. Close quote. We must die a little so that South Africans can be free. We must die a little so that Rhodesia can be free. This man, Ben Bela from Algeria, was talking about dying for South Africa to be free, dying for Rhodesia to be free. 
We don't have men and women of that caliber anymore. We have midgets. <laughs> Masquerading as leaders. Intellectual midgets. It's very difficult to integrate unless the psychology of our leaders is the psychology of, uh, of Pan-Africanism, of regional integration, and make sure that on balance, when we work together as Africans, the quality of life is going to improve. But there might be no president. It, it's okay. There might be no vice president. It's okay. The African who have a quality of life comparable to Japan, to the Americans, to Europe, and so on. But there is no such thing as a free lunch. There's a cost, there's, there's a price to pay for regional integration. We must be prepared. Remember, die a little. That's a, that's a sacrifice. He's saying he's prepared to die. Ben Bela was saying, let's die a little. Kruma was saying, we are prepared to give up our sovereignty. He was saying his independence is meaningless. That's the language which is missing now. And that's why integration is, uh, is tough. So, so fans, he or she who pays the paper calls the tune. You can't have the fourth industrial revolution or industrialization funded by the EU or funded by the British or the Americans. That's why I'm emphasizing pulling our resources together so we fund our own projects. We fund our own infrastructure plans. We fund our own industrialization. The African can only industrialize against the interests of the West. Black man, black woman, you are on your own. Biko was right. So yes, to donations, yes, to aid, but it's unsustainable. We must fund our own activities using our gold, our platinum, our diamonds, but more importantly, when you pull them together, they'll be much more powerful and we can negotiate better. Another point raised by Professor Mbo, you go and negotiate as Kenya, as Zimbabwe, as Malawi, you get shortchanged. When you negotiate as Comesa, negotiate as the FTA area, negotiate as the African continent, you extract better deals from China, from India, from America. And then you can raise the resources to pay for your, for your development. The aid and donations are not sustainable. Engineers, you see, the, the pro thought leaders, our engineers have not been uh, thought leaders. You know, in, in, we've heard great African scholars in history, in sociology, in literature. How many black Africans have gotten a Nobel Prize in physics, a Nobel Prize in chemistry, a Nobel Prize in medicine? But we've gotten one in, uh, for peace, yeah. which is all right. <laughs> <laughs> we got peace, we got literature, uh, we got work to do as scientists, as medical doctors, as engineers. We have not discovered things like Bill Gates, like Steve Jobs. So the African thought leader is uh, under pressure. We want to see the African engineer thought leader. And it's a lot of work because we need to be decolonized. Don't assume that as engineers, we can't invent things. We can't win Nobel Prizes uh, in sciences. But that will require us to, uh, to, 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 to do that. <coughs> Decolonization cannot be done uh, Decolonization cannot be done by universities alone. It has to be a national program. The country must embrace this de de decolonization. Because you, you, if you decolonize in the university, you go to industry, they're talking the old stuff. They're using the old standards. So decolonization must be a national program for South Africa. So that we're decolonizing our industries, we're decolonizing our public sector, we're decolonizing the whole country, so that when you are decolonized in the university, when you go to industry, you are meeting a decolonized environment. So it's a very large project. It can't be just the university. It has to be all embracing, omni 
uh, omnipresent so that we can be able to succeed. So I agree with you that unless and until it's all embracing, it is going to be very difficult uh, to, to do it just within the university. The engineers, I understand that brother. When I went to school, it was very rare for engineers to be uh, activists, to be going on demonstrations, to be president of the SRC. As engineers, please, start from now as students. Even if you are going to be an engineer proper, running ESCOM or running SASO or working in production, working manufacturing, it's important that as a student, you experience activism, you experience the leadership. You must be active in demonstrations as a medical doctor, as a medical student, as a physicist, as an engineer. You become a better engineer in life because you have better social skills, you have better leadership skills, you have better EQ, better social skills. Most of the engineers are nerds. All they need is how to code. They can't even get girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> you need social skills. <laughs> so I agree with you. We need to motivate and encourage engineers. <laughs> uh, and you said, we used to have this... Uh, these students from engineering, they'd walk around with their big books and drawing boards and go to the girls' dormitory and just walk around hoping that the girls would just run towards them. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be more, you know, than that, yeah? But they'll just show off their big engineering books. It's, it does, it won't work. So you, what, what, <laughs> what we're emphasizing is, as a medical student, as a physicist, get some social skills at university. Get some cultural intelligence. Get some emotional intelligence. It will make you a better doctor, a better engineer. Go on a demonstration. Go on strike. Sorry, Marwala. They must go on strike, these people. <laughs> so it's a challenge um, that they feel that uh, demonstrations, strikes, and noise is for law is for the history students, it's for sociology. But it's for all of us. You learn, you grow, you become better people by being active. So I encourage you to demonstrate. Uh, foreigner, foreigner, uh, I hope you know foreigner. You're not putting other African countries in that. Uh, you know, I, know, I know you're not, but I just want to emphasize that. That's another problem with these Africans. Xenophobia. Eh? Uh, foreign company for... I hope foreigner means Austria, foreigner means Europe, foreigner means not Ghana, not Malawi, not Mozambique. We are all Africans. So we need to make sure that as South African students, as South African citizens, yes, there are challenges, yes, there are problems, but as we try to create a better world, we don't victimize fellow Africans. When you say, ESCOM and foreign companies. I hope the foreign companies are not African companies. They are foreign as in Austria, Britain, America. And we embrace all these other African companies, African professionals, and African uh, people.